Well, hello, everyone, and Happy New Year. I've uh, been taping here for about 10 minutes and just realized that the monitor wasn't on. <laughs> so let me try this all over again. I hope you all have, have had a, a great New Year's Day and uh, a good New Year's Eve. First time I've say, stayed up for the New Year in, in a while. I don't normally do that. I'm normally in bed, but uh, I don't know. Last night just felt kind of special. Don't know why. And it really wasn't. Um, they let off some fireworks here in town, and Albert walked down the road to try to film some, and he said they were duds. You know, there wasn't really anything all that exciting to film or talk about or anything. I haven't checked out what he did film, but uh, if it's anything worthwhile, I might throw it in at the end of this video for you all to see. But uh, anyway, it, it's been overall a pretty good day. Sorry about the mix-up last night. Um, I did the tarot card reading video earlier in the day and thought I had released it, honestly. And then I got busy and made the uh, David Morgan dream video. And after I released that second one, then I thought, then I found out that I had released the original tarot reading. So it got released second. But uh, anyway, what did you all think of the, the David Morgan dream video? It's a it's a popular legend around here and amongst his uh, his family members, his ancestors, and there's a lot of them too. Those those families had a lot of kids back in the day. Now, there was one person that's not in the popular stories that I added in my video. And that was the girl that sat there beside his bed and took care of him while he was sick. Now, she's based on kind of a real character because Jacob Prickett, the man that owned the fort and all that land, he had a bunch of kids, a whole bunch of kids. And I figured it would have probably been one of the kids, most likely one of the girls, that he'd have set and watch, you know, and, and nurse David while he was sick. Um, so I didn't really actually pick, you know, get into the genealogy and actually pick out a certain person to identify them that much. But uh, just the general idea that uh, this isn't listed as a character in the story, but she kind of is indirectly because someone was caring for him at that fort that's for sure oh and another thing that video bothers me a little bit when i was making it and it, it still bothers me because of its it's not very politically correct you know, it's told from the settler's point of view, and it's looking down negatively upon the Native Americans. But while it's their story, and I wouldn't have had a video without, you know, the dream, because that's what I wanted to base the story on, was the dream. It... uh it has to be told from David Morgan's, you know, perspective. And because of that, the Native Americans are the bad guys in this story. And I use the same terminology as they did back then for realism, you know, but... Uh, 
it did bother me. I wanted to go through and change every reference to Indian to Native American, but uh, you know that that would have thrown the story off. I think. But enough chit chatting about that. Let's get down to uh, some of those readings. Okay, I know we had a number of them wanting uh, the past life oracle cards read and let's see first up i'm just going right down the list here first up is jill okay here's one for jill Okay, Jill, you have vows. You got this card, Jill, because the vows that you took in prior lifetimes are blocking you in this one. Most likely, you were a monk or a nun when you made these vows, which continue to haunt you. Common examples may include a vow of poverty or self-denial, which could block your flow of abundance, a vow of chastity, which could inhibit your romantic or sexual life in the present, or a vow of self-punishment, which can lead you to sabotage or hurt yourself. Unless vows are severed, they can affect you across time. Fortunately, vows are very easy to undo. It's simply a matter of firmly stating I am willing to sever all vows that are blocking me in this lifetime. I ask that all aspects of painful vows be now and forever undone in all directions of time for everyone concerned. By saying this either aloud or silently, you may help to heal the bondage of the past and open up yourself to the present day joy and abundance in all forms. Okay, Jill, let's, let's pull another one for you. Okay, this one is Wars and Battles. And this card indicates that you suffered or were killed in a war in previous lifetimes. Your unconscious will tell you whether you were a soldier, an officer, or a civilian who was, casual, who was a casualty during a battle. That lifetime could have turned you into a pacifist, or it could have made you conflict phobic, and you cannot stand any measure of violence or even loud voices. Conflict phobia prevents relationships from deepening as part of the authenticity stems from sharing your true feelings with each other. Conversely, that lifetime may have filled your heart with anger and the desire for revenge. In such a case, you would have difficulty controlling your temper. This may even lead to addictions in your attempt to bring about peace. If you have that natural warrior spirit, it's important to channel it in a peaceful and constructive way. For instance, being an activist for positive social change or a legal advocate who champions underdogs. All right. And one last one. You have the high priest or priestess. You probably already know that you were a high priest or high priestess during one or more lifetimes in the past. Most people who have held these roles have had a conscious sense of it. You've also retained your heightened spiritual knowledge which this card is urging you to put into greater practice. It's time for you to reignite your spiritual power and use it in the service of your divine mission of healing, teaching, and helping the world. This card urges you to release any insecurities you may have about your spiritual abilities 
or any fears about others knowing your beliefs. All right, Jill. Next up is Kim. Okay, Kim, your card is spouse. This card was drawn because it relates to a marriage relationship in this life or a previous one. Perhaps your current spouse is someone with which whom you shared a romance or relationship before. If you're single at present, your future spouse is likely from your past lifetimes. In some cases, lovers reunite across centuries and share an undying bond of true love. This is what is usually referred to as soulmate. So drawing this card can signify that the person you are inquiring about is, in fact, that individual. Next up, Kim, you have the high priest or priestess. And that is, you probably already know that you were a high priest or a high priestess during one or more prior lifetimes. Most people who have held these roles have a conscious sense of it. You also retained your heightened spiritual knowledge, which this card is urging you to put into greater practice. It's time for you to reignite your spiritual power and use it in service of your divine mission of healing, teaching, and helping the world. This card urges you to release any insecurities you may have about your spiritual abilities or any fears about others knowing your beliefs. And the last one. Oh, surprise. It's a baby. Okay. Here's a situation that involves an infant on some level. Your unconscious mind will reveal the way in which a baby plays a role in your current life. You may have already received an answer in the form of a thought or feeling. Trust this information as your unconscious mind will slowly and gently help you remember and release painful memories. At first, you may think you're imagining this information, but as you put together more pieces of the puzzle through signs and additional recollections, you'll feel confident in claiming your past lifetime. This card can speak about you as a baby in this or a previous lifetime. There may have been a trauma that you suffered as a baby or that involved a baby of yours in the lifetime. It it also might describe parenthood in this or previous lives. Your feelings and thoughts will guide you so that you can discern the specific meaning. So there you have it, Kim. I hope that made some sense to you. And let's see what Phoenix gets. And hopefully it's not a high priestess card again. (laughs) Not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, I'm feeling like Oprah here. You get a high priestess, and you get a high priestess, and you get a high priestess. (laughs) Okay. Okay, 
This is along the same lines, but different in its own way. Medicine man or woman. This card reveals your past lifetime as a healer. You brought this knowledge forward and it is now embedded within your unconscious. This is why you have an instinctive knowledge of healing as well as a natural healing gift. You drew this card to help you gain con confidence as a healer. Perhaps you're considering taking classes or entering a healing profession. This card indicates that you have a soul connection to the topic. While there's never a guarantee of absolute, absolute success, you have a passion and a calling for healing that could form the basis for a successful practice. Okay. Next up is Atlantis. Your lifetime in ancient Atlantis is affecting your current situation. You have soul memories of this idyllic civilization that offered every imaginable wonder. There's a longing for the utopia that you unconsciously remember and which you know is possible in this world. Your soul also remembers the tragic ending of Atlantis, and you may well have developed phobias about the ocean as a result. Although you love the sea, perhaps you prefer not to go swimming or sailing. You also recall how the majority of Atlanteans were peace-loving, with the exception of a few political leaders who misused crystal power to the detriment of all. So you may be extra sensitive to issues relating to political corruption in this lifetime. And the last card is communal living. You had a lifetime uh, involved in a communal setting, such as a convent, monastery, or tribe. Your earthly needs for shelter, clothing, and food were provided for. Although you held a job within the community, you fulfilled your responsibilities for the group and not for the individual gain. In your current lifetime, you may feel troubled by the concept of money, individual earnings, savings, and bills. You may feel unsupported because your soul is accustomed to having a community support system. To assimilate in this lifetime, find a balance and harmony between individual and group needs. Between give and take, understand how you fit into the culture and how the group can help you achieve your individual goals and aspirations and further your spiritual growth. And remember, no man or woman is an island. Yes. And I'm troubled by the concept of bills myself. Bills, who needs them? I could do just fine without bills. Thank you. Okay. Let's see who's next. I believe it's Sherry. Okay, Sherry. And Sherry wants a rune reading. Okay, let's see what Sherry's reading is. Okay, well nothing's turned up right, but this is standing up.
Okay. Jerry, you have... I'll put them in this order. That one went that way. So... I see some need, some big necessity. It's it's reflecting uh, your need. Uh, and it's kind of restricting your own self in the process. It restricts your possibilities, but it also contains the power you need to break free from those restrictions. This rune means... It's time to slow down, um, to uh, to to get pay, to learn patience, to uh, have patience. Um, it's considered one of the the great runes of delay. It advises you to hold back, because no amount of haste will speed things up. It indicates passing through a difficult learning situation or possibly a time of uh, crossing a great abyss, a great void. Emotional challenge of some nature is indicated. And you may be called upon to conquer fear. Now this is Suolo. With the help of this rune, you'll be able to see things a little bit more clearly. Like the sun sheds its light on dark times. Um, with this rune, it'll help you too find the light during your dark times. This means victory and power abound. Uh, it can show you you have much potential for power to bring beneficial changes to your life. Um, there, if you're fighting, there's a swift victory at hand. Um, or if uh, in a time of illness, I see a, a recovery or just a very strong life force going on here. Next, we have Wunyo, which is reversed. So, um, this is going to indicate that things are going to be slowing down for you coming up here. Um, and that you're going to have problems, some problems that are going to be hard to overcome. Doesn't say much on what they are or anything, but that's kind of like a, a bit of an instability going on there of some sort. And finally, Uruz. Boy. And this kind of indicates uh, a weakness of some sort, a uh, misdirected force, possibly. Uh, you might be dominated by others, you know. So you have to try to, uh, boy, stay strong. Looks like you're going to have some rough days coming up. Right now it's looking good. But, uh, boy. Sorry, Sherry. Um, you started out real good there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, stay strong. I'm really sorry. What a way to start off a new year reading. Okay, and now we have, um, let me move that out of the way. Rain wanted the Archangel Oracle cards.
Okay, let's see what Rain has. Teaching and learning. Archangel Zadikio, keep an open mind and learn new ideas. Then teach these ideas to others. You are a spiritual teacher and an avid learner. Learning and teaching are linked in a perfect cycle in which information comes to you when you need it. Teach others about the topics that awaken your passions. The more you teach, the more your lessons are reinforced within yourself. Be open to sharing new ideas and learning about topics that aren't in your immediate, immediate spheres of interest. Your students will teach you in many ways, too. Trust in your teaching and learning abilities, as your mind is one with the divine mind of God. You are an intelligent and wise being. Know that it's safe in this lifetime for you to be outspoken with your teachings. Now, Zadikio is the ultimate spiritual professor. Professor. He's patient, kind, and has the access to all knowledge. He's widely known for his ability to help human memory function. If you need to remember or memorize any information, ask Zadikio to assist. Anything you need to know, Z Zadikio is glad to help you. Just ask him questions in order to elicit his help. Sometimes Zadikio uses the Socratic method of teaching, which means that he'll lead you so you can learn for yourself. Being observant of patterns in everything you see, hear, and think is the best way to benefit from Zadikio's teachings. Next one. Overcoming difficulties. Archangel Jeremiel, the worst is now behind you and you are surmounting any previous challenges. The challenges you faced have made you stronger and have taught you new lessons. Instead of becoming bitter, you've opened your heart with compassion towards people in similar situations. You've let go of any blame or feelings of victimhood. That is why you're now overcoming your previous challenges. Your positive outlook is attracting a loving solution and new situations at a higher level of spiritual understanding. Stay positive. Jeremiel's name means mercy of God, and when you call upon him, Jeremiel delivers mercy to you and everyone involved. He guides you and others to act in loving ways and helps you to adopt a merciful look, which enables you to constantly treat yourself with respect and tender loving care. And the last one. Victory! Archangel Sandalphon, your prayers have been heard and answered. Have faith. You deserve this time of victory. Your unwavering focus and dedication have resulted in blissful manifestation. Peace and pleasant feelings are yours right now. Let me let your focus be on this present moment and savor each feeling and experience fully. Know that the future is taken care of in a positive way as you allow yourself to enjoy the present moment. Feel good about who you are and know that your success benefits others. Sandalphon is one of two archangels who were mortal men who lived such remarkable spiritual lives that they ascended into archangeldom. The other is Metatron. Sandalphon can help your life be a masterpiece as well. Ask him to help you live in integrity with your spiritual gifts of prophecy, healing, and manifestation fully awakened. Sandalphon can help you speak your truth openly in a way that benefits everyone. He'll help you appreciate all the miracles and victories of every size in your life. So there you go, Rain. All right. Like I said, I haven't looked at that footage yet Albert took of the fireworks. So I don't know if uh, if there is anything to show you, it'll be 
coming up right here. I hope you all have a blessed New Year's. Peace. Believe. And bye-bye.